Art. Where does the Phoenix go the other 137 years? Is it on an orbit? Okay, the simulacrum wants you to believe that you live in an actual solar system obeying the Newtonian physics laws. It's not true. Nothing actually, nothing actually obeys those laws. We just have the media tell, telling us it does. What we have is a genuine problem. Like in the 1890s, in early 19, early 20th century, we had scientists putting out reports that they had taken, they had done experiments, and they had taken photos of the of the sky and heavens from opposite hemispheres of the world in June, then waited till December and did it again. Now, supposedly, if we're truly on a ball going around a sun that's 93 million miles away, then that means 186 million miles away is where we're going to be the second time we take pictures. That distance absolutely necessitates the phenomenon of parallax, meaning there should be a shift in perspective on the photographs of the stars, but that's not what scientists found, and it was shocking, and these, these studies were widely published. Charles Fort spent a lot of time reviewing this material. The solar system is actually local. The stars are far closer than you think. When phenomena like the Phoenix occurs, we have, we have a really strange thing happening in the sky. We have, we have what's called variable star activity. All the variable stars in the sky, which is a minority, there's not a lot of them compared to the fixed stars, the variable stars increase and decrease their magnitudes and scientists don't know why. Variable stars are red. They're scattered throughout the heavens, but they're not hard to find. These are the ones that are always twinkling. But when the Phoenix occurs, variable stars go into overdrive. They are, they are, they're firing off all at the exact same time. In my paradigm, we are living in a controlled holography. The Phoenix has never gone anywhere because it never came from anywhere. This is all simulated. We're like in a Dyson shell where the sky is a projection. But when Phoenix happens, all these nodal apertures we call variable stars are bathing the, the inside of the simulation with all these energies to produce physical phenomena. And in the sky, we see this great red dragon. The moon turns red. The sun goes dark. Rocks fall from the sky. Flux tube, ap flux tube activity just starts vitrifying humans' uh, uh, settlements. It's so strange how all these giant thunderbolts from the ancient times never hit randomly. They always hit architecture. So the Phoenix weapon activates, does, does what it does, but in the simulation, it looks like it's an intruder world getting close. Transit, in transit, it passes over the surface of the sun, darkening the world, and then it disappears. But that's all holography. That's all coding. It's not really happening. This is a copy of a real universe. But everything in the sky is simulated. Even the motion of our world, while I'm sitting in this chair, I'm not moving 1,001 miles per hour. That's, that's the Newtonian model, where the world is spinning like a top. I'm not moving at all. Now, I'm not a flat earther either, and I've been through this many, many, many times. Because flat earth perfectly is perfectly explainable in the phenomena of simulation theory. But Jay Hart, it's a very good question. I don't believe anything is coming from anywhere and then departing. I believe it's always been here. I believe that all phenomena generated in the sky, the sky is done locally. It's all here. We are in a very tightly controlled environment. That's what I believe.